All right, so here we go. We'll get started. And let me put that button on. Oh, I got to put the right one on. Dun, dun, dun. guess it helps if I stop the recording. Here we go. All right.
Well, there you go. Hopefully that was a good start to the morning. And let me just switch my little view here. So I think there were some uh, some questions that popped up there. Sean, is that correct? Did I, did I see that? I don't see any. Oh, I, I saw see. something in the chat. We'll, we'll go into all that, yeah. Okay, well, we'll do that in a moment. And then we'll I'll enlighten you on some of the things there and some of the other things you can do with that song. And another feature that you probably use all the time, don't realize you're using it, and how you can use it to just kind of switch it up for your song. So before I do any of that, we have um, each week we are um, adding different students. Some are switching days and what have you, and so some are new. And for the benefit of the new people, Sean's going to go over quick Zoom tips for you. And um, I think you had something new you wanted to showcase or talk about today, too. So pay very close attention because if we might give you a pop quiz, not just on music, but on Zoom. And remember, if you get the answers right, we'll send you a virtual lollipop. We have an endless supply of virtual lollipops, and they're calorie-free. You don't have to worry about gaining any weight. I love it. I love the virtual chocolate chip cookies and milk. All right, go ahead, Sean. Well, okay. Uh, we'll go over a couple things today. Uh, some things you probably already know, some things you might not. Just a mostly review uh, if you've been in this class before. Uh, I swear by the time we're done with this, you guys are going to be more hip than your kids with this stuff, you know. So uh, we'll start with this. Uh, if you don't have your video on and you want that on, if you want us to see you, uh, you can do that. You can start your video and that is going to be on usually the bottom left of your computer. There's a button that says start video. Obviously, if you're, you know, hanging around in your underpants or something like that, maybe we don't want to see that. So you can stop video is the other choice on that. So stop or start. Uh, we'd like to see you. We like to see you dancing and stuff like that. It's always fun for us. And uh, the next feature I'll talk about is toward the center on the bottom. Uh, if you put your mouse over there or if you touch the screen, if you have a phone or an iPad, it should say participants somewhere. So when you see that word participants, if you click on that, it gives you an option to raise your hand. So that's just like if you're in a regular class, you know, in person, a lot of the time we'll be talking for a while and maybe you missed something or maybe... Uh, you have a question about something, just raise your hand. Uh, and we'll call on you to do this too. So we want you to know how to use this feature because uh, we'll ask once in a while, uh, did you catch that feature or did you catch that you know, chord I did? Uh, we'll, we'll have you raise your hand and let us know what you think. Uh, so that's right there with participants. So look for that. And uh, once you raise your hand, if you changed your mind, you, didn't, you don't have a question anymore, there's an option for lower hand. Uh, so just lower your hand if you don't have a question anymore, or maybe you clicked it by accident. Uh, I do that all the time. We unmute you, say, what do you have to say? And, oh, I'm just trying it out. <laughs> so uh, lower your hand if you don't have a question. Uh, otherwise, the last thing I'll mention, and this isn't too important at the moment, but this is somewhat new. On the top uh, right of your screens here, you have a couple choices of how you want to view things as well. Uh, you have what's called gallery view, which will show everybody in this call. Uh, and you don't need that so much unless you're trying to maybe find somebody. They said, oh, I'm going to be in the class. Look for me. Uh, you can do gallery view and look through the people on the class. Uh, otherwise, what you want most of the time is called speaker view, which will just highlight whoever is speaking. Uh, and that's what you want most of the time because you want to see us, you know, talking about something or Robert showing, you know, the instruments behind them, you know. You'll want to see it a little bit closer. So you want speaker view uh, generally. So that's all I have for today. Uh, but So we'll, we'll get back to the music here and go back to Robert. So if you have any questions, let us know. Okay. So the song that I um, featured there is, is a song that I'm going to be featuring today. But it's not so much the song that we're going to talk about today, although we will as some of the things you can do with your instrument to enhance other songs you play. So the song and that actually, I actually, actually, before we get into the meat of the song here, we did have a couple raised hands. I want to make sure we're not skipping over something real quick. Okay. Uh, uh, Cecilia. Oh, 
maybe I pressed the wrong button. Uh, I have a question from somebody named iPhone. I think next week maybe I'll teach you how to change your names on there. So iPhone, what did you have to say? Hello? Okay, maybe not. All right, Robert, All right. go ahead. I had a, there was in the chat that someone says H Frankie, I'm not sure if I can pronounce the last name. It says name of music, please. Well, let me put it up on the screen. So I'm going to do my screen share and do, let me find it. I know I had it up here. Give me a second. Da, da, da. Minimize. Okay, there we go. So the song, if you haven't figured it out, that I featured was Besame Mucho. Now, is that okay? Is that clear yet? Sometimes it takes a yeah, second. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So I will, again, I'll send this music out. And a couple things before I discuss this. You're going to see these things. There has A1, 2. These are just for my notations when I play the song. This is what I use. I have some settings. And I will send them in the email. Some people are able to download them through the link. If, if you're not, send me an email, and I'll attach it individually. At, but try it first. Um, and then there's just some notes on there. So, uh, but again, today's session, we'll talk a little bit about this arrangement, but more so things that you can do with all of the styles of music that you have on your instrument. So for this, but you could see it's a very simple two page song. Okay. And I, when I play this song, it, you know, you start with the music, forget the number letter, the A1 for a second, but it says to play the song through. And you can see here it continues through and you would play the song all the way through until you get to the end. And then it says DC Alfine. Return to beginning. Okay. And then you play to there. So essentially you play page one, page two, page one, and then you finish here. All right. That's, the, that's basically how the song is. When I do the song in concert or when I play for a group of people, I do that twice through. But when you're listening to the music, and I'll start here and I'll switch over to the instrument behind me, which is the Easy 10. Uh, there's a few things that you can do in this. You can do this. Uh, basically, everybody has a capability to some degree of doing what I'm going to share with you. I have two microphones. Well, I feel high tech. So what I did is I used the style there. Before I begin, um, does anybody know? Let's see if anybody can guess. This is how it sounded when I played it. Does anybody know what rhythm style I am using? I like to see who can guess it. You'll get a virtual lollipop or a virtual hand pause. Anyone? I'm going to play it a little bit and you look for a hands up. See who can guess. Wait, Pam Crick's iPad raised hand. Okay, go ahead, Pam. Latin guitar. Very good guess, but that's not it. But hold that thought because ah. I'm going to come back to Latin guitar a little later because that's, that's one of the things I'm going to talk about. Hold that thought. I'm glad you mentioned that style because I do use that style for the song, but it sounds a little bit differently. But it sounds like it, doesn't it? Because you got a lot of Latin guitar sounds going on there. Okay, now let me go to the next part of the song when I played. Okay, does that help? No, let's try this. Someone raise their hand. What rhythm you, style Cecilia, is that? Huh? What you got, Rupa. Cecilia? What did you What's say? Rumba Latin. Can you hear me? Yeah, now we can. And the answer is rumba. Yeah, that's what I said. Yes, slash begin. Some of the models say begin, rumba begin, but that's what it is. See, now here, is, now here is the style, 
when you go on your instrument, if you have a rumba style and you just pick the rumba with what you normally do, this is what it normally sounds like. You hear all of that stuff going on. Well, a lot of people that know me, uh, they've heard me play, they'll notice that a lot of arrangements that I play, I, I do what I'm going to talk about today. What I'll do is I'll take, out, I'll take a rhythm that I like to play, and in start of, instead of starting with all the hoopla, I, I turn off certain things. Like what I'll do is I'll turn off the drums. So this style you just heard, I'll turn off the drummer, and I'll turn off those. And then, and then you all have, most of you, I think almost all of you have it, you have some bass volume on your instrument. It just simply says bass, and you can turn down that volume. Some of you have a button that just says auto bass. So you can either turn down the volume or turn off the bass. Now listen. So now that, that bass tone is gone. And then you're left with just an accompaniment. And now in some of the higher models, you have an orchestra plus, and you could turn that down too. But this is what you get just by simply turning that down. Now, if you have an easy two or an easy four or 10, you have a bass button. Just turn down the bass, turn off the drummer. And a lot of times what happens is you take a style that has all the full band and you trim it down to a just a nice, depending on what the background is, a simple musician playing in the background. And that's just a fun thing you can do with a lot of styles. Now, some of the models, a lot of you have a model that's called guitarist or pianist, where it does that for you automatically. That's why um, when the guest was Latin guitar, if you listen to the Latin guitar, which is on the Easy 10, there's the Freedom, the, the new, new Estes have it, a similar style. When you listen to that style, it starts off with a bass and a Latin guitar. So you, that's why a lot of times when I play that, people think I'm using that style, but I'm not. <clears throat> but what happens is you can take any style and just by turning off the drum and the bass, you can create a simple style. So, for example, let's put on a, let's put on something like uh, we'll put on Dixieland. Now, this is the way Dixieland normally sounds. I'm going to turn off the drum and the bass. And then if you want to go a step further, turn off the Orchestra Plus, you got just a nice, simple honky-tonk player playing there. Any style that you use, you can do this with. Now, what you'll find is some styles it works better with than others, and some you may not do it at all. When I play beautiful love ballads and things like that, for example, when I use the love ballad, I actually take this style, which is gorgeous as it is. All right, and then I'll turn off the drum and the bass. And then what you, oops, I had text and I can turn on the golden harp. There you have just a nice, pretty, in this case, electric piano. And so you can do that with a lot. And that's actually what I do with the song somewhere out there. So that's one thing you can do with a lot of the styles. And it doesn't matter which one you do it with. Again, you're going to find that some you'll like more than others. So that was, the, that was the one thing that I did. But in the song, Besame Mucho, there are three key instrument sounds that I used. Um, the one was the obvious, was when I started off, I had a pretty uh, Latin guitar. Okay, now there's a couple things you can do with this. Um, first of all, if you have a, a Latin guitar, when I say Latin guitar, 
what I'm talking about is in the instruments that you have, a lot of the Easy Series has it, uh, the, the new Estes have it, uh, the, the larger models have it. Specifically, there's a sound called nylon guitar. And the nylon string guitar is a different sound than, say, a, a jazz guitar. So, for example, here is a, a, a nylon or Spanish type guitar. Okay, now I'll come right back. But here is um, on, I'm coming over to the Easy 10, and I'll bring it over here in a moment. But here, for example, is, um, oops, let me find the, do, 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 do. all right, so here is a, 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 a guitar sound, the nylon guitar. And that's a different sound than jazz guitar. Now, I'll come over to the Easy 10 in a minute uh, while I wheel the cart over, but they're both similar in the, in the type of instrument it is and the sound. Um, you know, they're like nylon string, but the, the technique and the sound is a little bit different than the, the jazz guitar sound is more of a hollow sound, whereas um, a nylon Spanish guitar has a little more brightness to it. Now, on the larger models, you'll notice you're, there's a little bit of echo in there. So for those of you who have the larger models, I use a thing called reverb. I kick it up a notch, and then there's another feature called delay in the screen. Uh, I won't go into that in today's lesson, um, but that, that allows me to say, Call your personal assistant at your local store and say, how do I adjust those delays? And they can help you with that. Um, so as I was playing the song, now bring the song up here. A little screen share again. All I did in this song is I started off with a guitar, just a nice, anybody can do this, any model, and I'm going to prove it to you. You start off. If you want to just keep it simple, start off with a nice Spanish or jazz guitar or Latin guitar, and I play it all the way through. And then when I get to the second page, all I do is I switch to a, a flute, a pan flute, if you have it. If you don't have a pan flute, a regular flute works just as nice. And if for some reason your instrument does not have a flute, switch the sound to something. Don't just keep it on the guitar. Maybe switch to a, maybe a woodwind sound, like a saxophone or something like that. Most of the models have a flute on it. And there's a little, another little tip I'm going to give you on the flute in a minute. And then when I repeat the song, I switch to the trumpet, okay? Or a horn sound or a trombone or something different. So as I'm playing... So you, you hear the guitar sound. And then as I play it through, and I play it through the guitar, and then when I repeat the song, I just go to a trumpet. Now, here's a little something that I've taught some of the students. If you listen to a real guitar player play, when they strike a note, no matter how many times they strike the same note, they're never playing at the exact same volume and they don't and a lot of times if they're playing by themselves they pick in a way that has what I call like a choppy effect so if someone out there says you know sometimes I play choppy anyway this is perfect because when I'm using the guitar sounds when I play these song this song I have a tendency of doing this now the, the way the notes are on this on the music is And that's fine, but I like to do this. And so if you kind of have this, this playing skill that maybe you have a little hard time getting the notes, this might actually work for you. Because this is where I say play the notes a little choppy. Okay, so give it, it gives it a little bit of that authentic guitar sound to it. And, and if you happen to have what's called the touch feature, the dynamic key, it helps. 
So for example, I'm going to turn off the touch feature. No watch. I mean, that's okay, but if you have the touch feature on, if you hit it softer, it just gives it a little bit more of that authentic guitar sound. All right. Now listen to the flute. When I went to the flute, I did the same thing. If you have the touch feature, I would encourage you to use it. It's a little harder for students to use it because you got to strike the notes harder. But this is one of those cases, if you use the touch feature or the dynamic keying, depending on the model you have, it's called something different. It just means the harder or softer you hit the note. Okay, but when you're using a flute sound, in this case, it almost doesn't matter how hard or soft you hit it because the way you play it is going to give it a little bit more of that authentic sound. And if you think about a flute or a pan flute, you know, they're blowing into the instrument and they, they blow sometimes in a certain way. And if you ever, I don't know what it's called, um, when they, they blow into the, the flute and they don't really get a note, but they get a breath effect. What do they call that? Does anybody know? Let's ask Brian. Maybe Brian knows. Brian, do you know that? Harmonic overtones, I think. Wow, that's a very fancy term for what I would say is they give you kind of a breathy <laughs> tone that you're not really playing the note, and it's kind of like this. You can kind of hear the note in it. So if you have that feature, this is great because you don't have to play the notes exactly as you see them. It's almost like I'm saying play the, the notes a little incorrectly so it sounds right. So if, you play, so if you play it right, it may sound wrong. So play it wrong so it sounds right. So here we go. So if you notice as I strike the notes, I don't always hold it, and when I do, then you hear that note come in. Now, when I do a trumpet sound, I do the opposite. Now, look at the notes on the, on the, on the music here. And I'm going to pull up. All right, so you see it on the screen there? Okay, so you notice the way the notes are, it says D, D, D. But when I play it, I don't play D, 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 E, I, I, when I see that many notes, I, sen I tend to tell myself that's too many notes. So I just pick one and I hold it. Now watch, or, or listen, should I say. So normally, that would be played like this. Instead, what I do is... So a lot of times, when I, I, every now and then, I'll do a song, and someone will come up to me and go, I noticed when you're playing that song, you were just holding the notes. There's a lot of songs that we do that with, especially if you're using like sh a strings with it, works nicely with that as well. You don't have to play every single note because everything, else, the instrument's doing a lot of the work. It tends to fool the ear, the notes being played, and what happens is people love it just the same. So those are just some quick setup tips on the song Besame Mucho. You have a guitar, a flute and a trumpet. I chose a rumba style and I turned off the drums and the bass to start off with and then of course there was more in the arrangement. However, um, if you're just using some basic simple setups on any, you know, if I, well, if I go over here to the easy 10, Okay, you can see that okay? I got my laptop. All right. So you can do that with any of the styles. Now, someone said earlier Latin guitar. 
Um, the, the new ST Freedom, and the Discovery uh, threes, um, the Easy Series, almost all of the Easy Series has it. Uh, but you can also use another style called Latin guitar, which I'll play a little bit. And then I actually, when I finish today, I'm going to play the same song using the Latin guitar on the, on the symphony over there with, um, with using some of those same sounds. But there's something that's pretty clever on your instruments that you have that works for anything, not just Latin. Okay? So I'm going to put on the Latin guitar guitarist category, and I'm just going to use the style setup, and I'm going to play a C chord. So that's nice, and you can hear that, and then I'll do, bring the drummer in, and I'll do the same thing. There you have a just a real pretty style. But now listen closely. That I played a C chord. I'm going to do the same thing, but play a totally different. Uh, I'll, I'll play a minor chord. to that intro and ending. Now I know some of you know this, but you have a lot of the inch, the styles, when you play a chord, if you play a major chord or a minor chord, it's going to give you a totally different introduction. So that one there sounded like this. And if you do the ending, or the a minor chord, it's totally different. Which leads me to not just Latin music, but any style of music you're playing. And this will be kind of the fun thing you can do um, after today's class is over the next several days, explore your rhythm styles and, and choose different rhythms and play a major chord and a minor chord. And so, for example, if I put on pop, we have one here called, actually, there's one. Here's one called 6-8 Guitar. Now I'm going to do the same one, but this time I'm going to do a minor chord. Wow, that one there, when I heard it, sounded like House of the Rising Sun. So any of the styles you choose will sometimes give you just, sometimes they'll give you a signature style hidden in the minor chord and vice versa. Uh, and sometimes there's a subtle change. But let's, let's put on Frank in the Count. That's a style that most people have on their instruments. I'm going to put up C chord. So that style's been around for a long time, and many people are familiar with that. And, you know, we do a lot of, you know, Frank Sinatra tunes with that. But here's another. Uh, I'm going to play in the minor chord, and maybe you'll play a different Frank Sinatra tune. notice a lot of the styles have two different intros and endings and what I'm about to tell you is something that 
a lot of students don't do. Some of the creative ones maybe eventually, or maybe they heard us teach this, but it's something that you can do, and this works on any of the models. You can take a song that you're going to play and use the different intros and endings because they'll do different things for you and just kind of change up your music. And for those of you who have intro ending one and two, then you just get more. So if you have an intro ending button, you essentially have up to you essentially have up to four intros and endings on most of those styles. Um, and when we say intro ending to a different style, here's what I'm talking about. If you put on a rhythm and you play a C chord and then a minor chord, if it sounds the same just in a different key, then it doesn't change it that much. But if it does change, a lot of times it will change the background altogether. So if you have one intro button and you hit a major chord, that's one introduction. If you do a minor chord, that's a different introduction. And when we say different introduction, the band is doing something differently. And then when you do the ending, you have a major introduction. If you do a minor, you have, so that's four. So if you have two of those buttons, now you have eight. And here's, here's a couple examples of that. And then we have a little, uh, 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 we'll see w if anyone can know the answer to the question. We have a little trivia. Uh, so I'm going to put on a style here. Oh, I did this yesterday. Let's see. Is it under Broadway? There's a movie, there's a style called Epic Movie. All right, so some people have it. So this is what it normally sounds like. And tell me what movie this goes to. Oh, that's not it. You ever push the wrong button on your instrument? It doesn't happen to any anyone but me, I guess. Okay, here we go. Epic movie. Let's switch to presets. Here we go. Okay, before I go any further, what song is that for? What style is that for? What song? Anybody? Anybody guess? Raise Gene, your hand. Go ahead, Gene. <laughs> you can't hear Paulette, no? Gene? Yeah. What yeah, is it? I hear you guys. My, my wife says it's uh, Gone, Gone with, with the Wind. Well, you just won there yourself you a virtual lollipop. We're sending it your way right now. Oh, I'm so pleased. Eat, eat up on it, and don't worry. You can go work out later. I'll suck You're it correct. while I'm playing my virtual guitar. <laughs> so we, yes, that is Gone with the Wind. Now, if we do the minor chord, watch this. This is the same style, just playing a minor chord. Works greatly for that song, which happens to be anybody know what song that was? Cecilia either knows or has a question. Exodus. 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 You're right. You know what? What a lot of people don't know um, when I play when I play the song Phantom of the Opera, I have a couple of different arrangements. Um, one of them is I use a style called Slum Doggy, and a lot of people don't use that style. Um, probably because they don't have a lot of music for it. And if you're playing the song Slum, Slumdog Millionaire, that's the major chord. What I do a lot is I'll transpose that down to like E or F or something like that. We mentioned transpose last week. We'll take that same style and do a minor chord and watch what happens. A lot of 
of times I'll do that also with the epic movie that you just heard. And I'll switch over and I'll do something like... That's just using the epic movie, which most people would say, oh, well, that was the Gone with the Wind style, the intro. So you can, there's so many different styles that you can use with different intros and endings. Uh, I'll do one more, and then I have a question to see who can get the answer. Um, but here's one, for example. It's called, uh, well, let me see. Use my keypad. Happy Organ. And uh, Brian, are you there? You told me yesterday, but I forgot the answer. So when I play this, you'll have to be prepared. But he, he's, he had a couple song choices in mind. Uh, happy Organ. So when I put on Happy Organ, this is just a regular rhythm preset here. Okay. So, Brian, what, what, what's a common song that a lot of people play with that one? What did you say yesterday? To me, the, the intro sounds like the, the Beatles version of Twist and Shout when they do that kind of stacked vocal thing at the beginning. Oh, ba, oh yeah, let me see. Ba, 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 oh, yeah, you're right. You could do that. Uh, maybe just slow it down a little bit, and you got a great style for, uh, oh, that was in a different key, too, but you could slow it down a little bit. Let's see. Well, that's obviously a song I have to learn. Now I want to learn that song. Uh, so there's a lot of great songs you can play with that. You can do uh, the, the twist with it, which works great. A lot of great songs. But here's that same style with an intro. And, and, and see if you can guess this one. Okay. Guesses. Joanne raised her hand. Go ahead, Joanne. Peter Gunn. Peter Gunn. Peter Gunn. Oh, yeah, that works out nicely. If you put on the happy organ, now there's a little trick to the happy organ. For those of you who have that style, you want to make sure the auto bass 2 is on. So remember. Go ahead, that. Cecilia. Hello. Hi. Hi, we hear you. Oh, Pink Panther. Pink Panther will work with that too. Was that the one you that, did? No, that was Peter Gunn. Peter oh, Peter Henry Gunn. Henry Mancini's Peter Gunn theme. Yep. Oh, you can Texas. use that too and probably that Mission Impossible? You could. Now, the trick to Mission Impossible is that it's a five, Mission Impossible is a five, four song. So it gets a little tricky for that one. Now, um, Brian, I had a question for Brian because the, Brian is, uh, is also one of our musical experts. We got a lot of musical experts at Fletcher Music, but I'm putting him on the spot here because uh, starting in a week, uh, he's going to be starting doing some instruction. We're going to have a lot of different teachers teaching and what have you. But um, a, a simple way to use rhythm styles, here's the, here's the question. <clears throat> Let's see if the student, someone in the students can get it first. If I'm playing a song, as you notice, most of our easy play songs are in the key of C or F. And so if I want to play a song like Spanish Eyes, it's a 
if you open up the song in Spanish eyes, what key is that in, Brian, is in the black book? Is that C? And it's C. Okay. So if you play the song Spanish eyes, and it's in the key of C, and I just, you know, I'm using a Latin style, and just, let's just say the bossa nova, okay? Everybody has a bossa nova. We would normally just hit the C chord. All right? But every time I play Spanish Eyes, I'm playing that song in that same key all the time, but I want to take advantage of the minor key introduction. So a question for the students, I think Brian knows the answer to this, but we'll see if someone else can catch on. If I want to play the song um, Spanish Eyes, which is written in C and easy play, and I want to use a minor introduction, which minor chord do I use that would work best? Any students? I don't see any hands. Uh -oh. oh, we got one. Cecilia, go ahead again. A D? Wait. Go ahead, Jean. Uh, a D? No. Well, I don't know. What, the what are the minor ones? Well, Jean, what did you have to say? Jean? Jean's iPad. Jean's iPad. Where's Jean's iPad? I got him. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right, Jean, go oh, ahead. I see ice. Oh, we unmuted you and then you muted you. Let me unmute you. Now. Okay, go ahead, Gene. B flat. What? Okay, B flat. B flat. B flat. B flat. So if the song's in C, you're going to do a B flat minor? Well, the answer is really you can use any minor key you want. It just may not sound the way you like it. Brian, what, what is the well, first recommendation, the ideal so recommendation? Yesterday we talked about two things. Uh, one's pretty easy and one's maybe a little bit more challenging. Um, the easy one is just try the minor of whatever the, the song, whatever key the song is in. So if it's in C, try a C minor chord. And then the more challenging one is uh, a concept that they call the relative minor. And you can all do this. All you have to do is count down to the left three keys from whatever key your song is in. So for example, if we're in C, I don't know if you can see it on my thing here, but if we're in C, you would count down to the left, one, two, three, and you land on A, right? So you'd play the A minor. And if the song is in F, you would do what? So again, one of two things, you can just try the F minor chord for the intro, see how that sounds. Or if you wanna find that relative minor, you count down to the left three keys again. So if we're on F, you count down E, E flat, D, you land on D minor, and then that would be the relative minor for F. Now to make it easy for all of you, with taking what he just said, most of the songs are in the key of C or F or G. So if you have a song that's in C, you have two ways to do it. A C minor or the relative minor, which is A minor. So write that down. And also if you forget, I mean, everyone here is on some kind of smart device, whether it's your computer or your phone or tablet. You can probably just pick it up and say, Siri, what is the relative minor of F? And it'll probably tell you. Oh, it'll tell you or bring you to a website that tells you. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so if the song's in C and you want a minor, you could, you could have the option of just turning that C into a minor. And then you continue the song as you do or play the A minor. If it's an F... F minor or the relative minor is D minor. And then occasionally that easy play song that's in G, you can do G minor or E minor is the relative minor. So here's the C, here's Spanish eyes with the C introduction. Now here it is with the A minor. When you're playing that song, when you're finished, if you want to end with a minor chord, you can do both. You can end with a minor, start with a major, end with a minor, or vice versa. But if you want to do the same thing, you would just play the same chord that you used in the beginning. Um, 
uh, that you did for the you use for the ending. So it was kind of interesting too. Is if you go through some of those minors, you're going to hear other songs like what was the song that that sounded like a movie theme, a TV show theme in that introduction? What was that? It was, uh, fly me what, to the moon. Fly me to the moon. Um, I, like it. I also heard a little bit of. Is that kind of was that kind of similar to the Mash theme? The old TV shows. You'll hear oh, little things yeah, with introductions so. that will spark your brain waves and think, oh, well, that song, "Fly Me to the Moon." It's funny because a lot of people play that in four four, but it's actually uh, there's music out there. It's in three quarter, but you play it in four four. So you can do these minor chord introductions in many different ways. Instead of you know, there's songs like that I've played for years that sometimes. I, it's hard for me to play the song and keep the same enthusiasm with because of my, the introduction's always been the same. Now you can change them up and use different uh, styles. Uh, one more here for you, Chicago Swing. has been around since the 80s, late 80s. And if you do use your introduction with a minor chord. So it really changes it up a little bit. So you can do a lot of things with the intros and endings that we just, sometimes we just put it on because we just want our song to have a different introduction and you can give it a little different flavor. So what I'm gonna do is back to Bessima Mucho. I'm gonna finish off, someone mentioned Latin guitar. I'm gonna play that similar arrangement that you heard um, using the Latin guitar style. Um, and uh, you'll hear some real pretty uh, Latin guitar sounds. You'll hear a different flute. Instead of a pan flute, I think I'll use one called a flute overblow, uh, and then another horn sound in there. Uh, and before we do that, does anybody have any questions or anything before we go on? We'll let Sean and Brian answer. Questions about today. Oh, we got one. Carolyn, go ahead, Carolyn. Okay. Um, this has nothing to do with what you're saying. However, I have a question. On the classic Western Broadway vintage, the, the uh, setup is um, number six. I'd like to know the high-low synth bell is it sounds great on the bottom keyboard. However, when you do that on the top keyboard, it is muddy. Why yeah. would it? Play it up an octave, that's all. You can't do it on the octave on the top keyboard with the high low when you have it in a rhythm style. And I don't top, know. Just because the setup has uh, sound on the top and the bottom doesn't mean it's going to always work the same. Oh, okay. That's Thank the, you. That's the best answer because a lot of times that sound is on both keyboards, but the top keyboard might be set up for a five part harmony and the bottom is set up for as a solo, so it's not going to always work out the same. Um, now, before I play this, any questions about anything that we've just talked about with the song Besame Mucho or the intros and endings? Looks like we got a question Go from Joanne's Go ahead, Joanne. iPad. Yeah. Go um, ahead, Joanne. Are you, are you by chance going to send us, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the song setups for uh, Besame Mucho? You said you were going to send what it to What model do you have? I have a Sterling. Okay, so yes, you're, you're going to see a link that will say, you know, click here for the presets. Uh, it's okay. In a, it's in a Dropbox, so um, I, I put some basic instructions. Some people know how to download it to computer, put it on their stick. If you, the, yeah. the thing that I'll ask is to try it first, and then if you can't, then just email me, because uh, you know, it's coming from that email, and then I'll just attach it and send it to you. <laughs> So one way or okay, the other, you'll get you. it. All right. Plus, well, I'll attach right. the music. I'll attach the music to it. Yet, uh, I haven't been told I'm not allowed to do that yet. So I'm gonna uh, keep doing that until I'm told I shouldn't. Um, but anyway, so yeah, you'll get again this weekend, Saturday or Sunday. I usually 
I take all of the videos and the materials and everything. I put everything together from the three classes we taught. We have three different classes going on, uh, and then I upload them and et cetera, and then you'll get all those, and it'll say click here for that, click here for this, click here for that, and, and that's all you'll have to do. Any other questions? One more question from Cheryl. Go ahead. Yes, you talked about, about the happy organ as a rhythm preset. Does the Rialto have that? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to say 98. What? Say it again, Brian. I said, I said, I'm pretty sure it does, but I would check on your style list. That's the easiest way and just scroll to the H's or use your uh, alphabet keypad. Happy organ. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost certain it's on there. But we, we have to give ourselves that 1% chance. So because we've got a bunch of people listening and we can't be wrong. So I'm sure you're right. <laughs> I'm, I got to feel like I'm a politician once in a while. All right. So with that said, oh, my video's still off. One more question from Carolyn. One Go more ahead. question from Carolyn. You're okay, Sean, how do you uh, get a picture? And how do you, what does the start video on the bottom mean? It means your video will turn on. It means it'll start your video. Right, recording? No, it won't record. It's just putting your camera on so we can see you. Oh, is that what that thing is? Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> That's and all. the picture? It'll show yeah. up on the screen. Oh, it's the same thing? So yeah. I have to click on that then? Yep. If you want your video on you. Yep. Oh, you're showing up. Do I show up now? Well, we see something. It's blurry. It's something. I see Robert. Yeah, we kind of see you, but it's a little blurry, so maybe the lens okay. has to be clean. Um, okay, so what do? I'm going to do now, before we uh, adjourn, I'm going to play Besame Mucho uh, using the Latin guitar, the actual Latin guitar style that was thought that was being used early on, uh, and similar arrangement, but slightly different in, in, in the way the styling is. And we hope you will enjoy this. Here we go. And I'm going to use this time what happens the, normally the introduction is like this, or the minor chord is like this. But this time I'm going to use intro two with the minor chord. And here we go. Listen.
Well, I thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this fabulous workshop today. And let me go back over here. Before we go, if we have any last comments or anything you'd like to say on the way out, that's fine. We'll stay on for a minute. Um, we hope you enjoy. Oh, a couple of things that I did mention is <clears throat> um, next week, if we get uh, Brian hooked up, we're trying to get his uh, equipment hooked up at the corporate office right now, I think. <clears throat> that may change. And uh, what have you, and get him all set up because he'll start teaching some of those classes. In the beginning of June, uh, we are working to put uh, other skill levels like conductor magic. We're going to do a, um, a high-end uh, workshop for those who have the, like the marquees and the arias, what have you. On June 1st, uh, it's 9 o'clock, but I might switch it to 8.45 a.m., which would be 11.45 a.m. Florida time. And then we're going to have some other things that we're going to have that we're working on scheduling right now. A lot of it has to do with just getting the technology in the hands of the people that need to do it. Because I've been doing this for about a month and a half now, and I feel like I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, I'm going to turn it over to anybody. Have anything they'd like to say on their way out? Uh, you can say, uh, send me my virtual lollipop. Um, I think I ran out of them today, so I may have to send it next week. Okay. You can talk, Stan. I see you raised your hand. Go ahead, Stan. Yes, uh, it, for your uh, Facebook concerts, if anybody has Chromecast, I'm able to bring that up on my computer and cast it to my TV set and listen to your concerts with theater, with my theater sound. Oh, wow. wow. Big difference. The Ooh. bass really booms. Yeah. So for those of you who I uh, would make note of that, I always wear headphones too, if you could too, if you don't have all of that. All right, Winnie. You guys are welcome to unmute yourselves. Some yeah, we, Sean their hands. says he, it's okay you for you to hit a mute. Winnie, you're raising your hand. Go ahead, Winnie. And Bonjo. Thank you so much. I'm anxious to try all these tips. Yeah, well, we're going to quiz you next week. <laughs> yeah, lollipop. We won't kick you off, but if you get it right, we might send you a virtual Reese's peanut butter cup. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like I heard that if you eat 10 of those, uh, you won't gain any weight, virtual one. Now you're making us all hungry. <laughs> yes, I know. I like I'm I ready like for lunch pieces. too. <laughs> well, thank you so much, folks. We hope you enjoyed today's class. And again, sure this did. is a work in progress. Very and, much. Uh, and we're gonna thank keep, you. We're gonna keep feeding you information and uh, get you some more stuff. So we're working on June. Right now, our target date is to announce some additional things in June. But for right now, we'll continue these doing these classes. So stay tuned in. And see Robert. you very soon. Bye. Bye, Bye. Robert. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. So and from Al. Bye, Robert. Raising, Thank you. Saying, yes, there is a Thank concert you very tomorrow. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.